it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden video. So we are once again down in the shady part of my garden. I found another thing to add. So as you know, we have been adding some foxtail ferns and some peonies down here, some lupins that we've grown from seed. But I have been on the hunt for some cyclamen. I love these plants. I have one inside as a house plant and they're just so pretty and kind of whimsical and fairy-like but they are not the least expensive of the plants they are quite pricey and they don't do well in all environments and so i've had one um, on my porch before and it did beautifully um, for the entire season but then they go dormant in the hottest part of the season and that was my very first year I'd ever had um, plants on my porch. So I did not know that it had just gone dormant and would come back the following year. I had been told it was an annual. And so I tossed it, not realizing I could have kept it. So that was my fault. But I'm going to go ahead and try to plant some of these out in the landscape. We will see how they do. They don't always do well in the landscape. And hot climates like we are here in the south but typically they do okay in shady locations under a tree so i have two types i have some bare root or tuber types and i will put a close up but these are little just like pocky puck little dudes <laughs> you plant them one to two centimeters under the soil and they take a minute to grow but by next year we should have some growth on these so I have four packs of these and they are a hedrofolium variety, which means they typically will bloom in the fall to winter. So that's nice. They are a light purpley kind of flower. I also grabbed a pack of these. Now my big box stores down here have been selling these all winter. And I have looked at them every time I've gone, but they are $13, $12.89. Um, for these tiny little babies and they just never looked that good that healthy to spend that kind of money on them they have lots of healthy larger pots that I that's how I got my one inside but I don't want to spend you know eight dollars a plant that's just not feasible for me so I waited until they marked them down and then I grabbed one and we'll just add these as we go so I think I'm gonna do a group of purple, a couple pink, a group of purple, a couple pink, a group of purple, all the way around my swoop. I want them to come up kind of in front of the peonies and the foxtail ferns when those things are up and leaving. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay them out and then I will give y'all a close up look of them and then we'll plant them. Should be fun. Let's see. Woo, falling over. I think I'm gonna start right here in front of this first Sarah Bernhardt peony. And like I was saying, when you look at your tubers or your roots here, they are little tiny shoots on one side. So that is your top. And then the bottom is going to be either smooth or maybe have a couple roots. Most of the ones in these packages are fairly smooth. So you're going to plant them one to two centimeters, just barely under the surface with the shoots up and the smooth side down. All right, so here's one of the pink ones. You can see that they are growing from the same kind of tubers as the purple. You can see what the sprouts turn into is these tall pink fairy-like blooms or light purple or white or red. I have been bottom soaking these for a couple, about an hour, um, but they're just in rough shape. Now this one has two, so I could technically separate these um, but I'm going to lay them out and then decide if I'm going to do that or not. They're in such rough shape. I kind of don't want to mess up the roots. So let's go ahead and see, let's lay them out and decide.
All right, so I was going to do three sets of the purple and two sets of the pink, but once I laid everything out, I decided to spread it out a bit more. Now on the packages, it does say that the purple ones need to be about three to five inches apart and the pink ones want six to eight inches. So we're, we're putting everything between four and five inches apart and we'll either add more in the future or let them grow together. But I've laid our purple ones out in kind of triangles. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of our purple tubers and then two of the pink. A smaller triangle, but here we go. Six of the purple. Now we've got a foxtail fern here and a peony tuber right here. Now the peonies, of course, will come up in the spring. The foxtail ferns, once they come up, we had a horrible freeze last year and it took them out. But if we don't have a freeze, they stay green year round. So hopefully they will be green at the very least when these guys come up in the autumn. Then we come around. We'll have more of the cyclamen to grow under this fern. Purple cyclamen, pink, purple. Now we've got the peonies, which are pink, except for this one, which is white. So I put the pink cyclamen under the foxtail ferns and the purple under the pink peonies, even though they won't necessarily be up at the same time. Once the peonies are established, they can come up in the spring and the cyclamen will last until it gets really hot in the spring. So just in case they are all up at the same time at any point, which I kind of doubt, we will have a bit of a not pink on pink situation. So let's go ahead and set y'all up and I will start putting these babies in the ground. And yes, I may have accidentally bought more peonies. I don't know how that happens, but I'll pop those in. I've got places, don't worry. This is not a problem. All right, so for these little guys, we're gonna come in and rough up the dirt just a bit. I'm gonna plant him in here. Literally just a little bit of dirt right on top. Not much. That is that is all we're gonna do. These are very, very shallowly planted guys. Kind of like the pin. And then I'm going to stick a tag down right in the middle, just so we know we're planting stuff over here. What we've got, once these start to come up, hopefully that won't be as important, but for now, I would rather not lose them. As for our pink friends, we are going to come through and just going to pull out all this dead before we put them in the ground. Now I have found that these guys are kind of drama queens, meaning you need dead heading. I wouldn't say often, but fairly often. Look at all those little babies in there and they will tell you if they need water. So if you're walking by and they are literally wilted all the way over laying on the ground like they just lost their best friend, they're probably fine. Give them some water. On the other hand, if you water them too much, they don't like that either. So once or twice a week, is usually just about perfect. If you start watering once or twice a week, I try for once a week. 
And, uh, and if that's not often enough, they will let you know. They will tell you. They will be like, hey. I need more water than that. We are just going to put this guy in even with the surface level of his little pot. We will water everything in. If I was planting these in the fall, I would put fertilizer down in the hole with these and with the bulbs, but it is the wrong time of year for that. They're going to go to sleep in a month or two, if not sooner from being transplanted. So I'm not going to put fertilizer in here. I'm just gonna put them in, water them, and let them do their thing. All right, let's do the rest. They're all watered in. The pink ones at least look pretty happy. And I am very happy that I got the pink ones. I almost didn't. I almost just got the light purple. But the light purple ones, we'd have nothing to show for our efforts. And at least the pink ones are a bright, happy splash of color down here, which is nice. Echoing all the pretty pansies down that way. Now we'll have spring coming up here shortly with lots of other color, but in the meantime, this is a project I've been wanting to do for a long time, maybe about two years. So I'm very happy to have it done. We'll give you updates on how they do, if they survive, if they thrive, if they all die. I am hopeful that since the ones on my porch in the shade did well, that the ones down here in the shade will do well. They definitely cannot handle our Alabama full sun. So. We will give you updates, um, but it may be with these, with it about to get warm down here, it is February. It may be next year before we see any growth at all from these, despite the ones that we just planted that have blooms and babies that are going to bloom. So I hope you liked this video. If you have cyclamen in your yard, um, leave a comment down below and let me know what zone you're in and where you have them planted. And uh, I, I always like to know how they work for other people. So I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.